citizen vote. Yeah, and, and put much information on the importance of mm -hmm. voting too, because we're in a voting season and whatever, and the, mm -hmm. et cetera. Don't let Donald Trump. Huh? Yeah. Okay. You know, just the just that's what I'm you know talk about the basic constitutional rights that have, they have uh, people have the Thirteenth Amendment black folks had because they were mm -hmm. slaves and the Fourteenth Amendment they became citizens and the Fifteenth Amendment allowed them the right to vote and now we, when we talk about voting this is where it's needed people like your Wait a second, sir. people in your situation. <laughs> and, 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 Thank you, and welcome back to the uh, final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Alana McLaughlin, and she's given us some information in reference to anti-Islamic sentiment in the United States of America. Now, Lana, you've covered uh, quite a bit of information during the first and second segment. Let's give you the uh, opportunity during the final segment to deal with some of the other aspects of uh, this anti-Islamic sentiment. All right, and so if you're just tuning in, in the second segment, I talked about one ex personal experience that I saw anti semitism <laughs> Anti-sentiment. Sentiment, oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sentiment going on um, towards a man who was carrying a Quran. He had on a traditional dress from uh, some country. I, I'm not quite sure because I haven't really taken any cultural classes. But he was an American. He was carrying a Quran. So I'm going to make an inference that the man was a Muslim. And so we were in, we were kind of walk. Okay, I was in Washington, D.C. So I was at John F. Kennedy Airport. And I was coming, I was trying to go to Nashville. And so I was going through TSA and he was behind me. And so I got all my stuff packed. I put it in the little cubbies. They put it through. I got my stuff back. It was over with. And I was waiting on the chaperones that I was with to accompany me onto the flight and all that. So I kind of sat down and I was observing what else was going on at the airport. And I saw TSA kind of giving the man who was behind me a hard time. Like, for instance, they made what they would do. Like, this is his Quran. They would open it and just like kind of kind of manhandle it, trying to see if there was anything in there and they were shaking it. Like it, it was, and it didn't look in too great a condition. So it looked like it could have snapped like that. And it was just, they were giving him, they were doing so much extra. And that really just made my blood boil because at that time there wasn't anything I can do because I couldn't go up there because once you go through TSA, you, I couldn't go straight because as he was coming through it, I couldn't go through that line and everything was too busy. So I couldn't really do anything about it except, you know, tell the chaperones I was with and even they expressed their own disgust about it. And that just really made me think, wow, like that's that's something that happens so often, but it's never reported on websites, et cetera. But let that have been any other race getting racially profiled. I promise you it would have been everywhere if that was me. And they were double checking my stuff and asking me stupid stuff like, um, do I live in Chicago or do I do, do I have a father and stupid stereotypical things like that? Trust me, it would have been on News Channel 5 like that. And, or on and, Fox and, and so you, you find that this is quite prevalent. It's quite prevalent in terms of the denial in a real sense of people's constitutional rights. The it is. Citizenship rights and, and, and whatnot. Is that what you're saying here? It is. And that's why I feel like. There are certain political candidates who do not encourage equality. I'm not going to go into name dropping or anything, but there are certain candidates that do not support equality. And I f feel like, th though, okay, right now, the two top candidates are Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And that's just, you just really can't fight that. And I feel like, since I'm not old enough to vote, I'm just watching this unfold. And I'm not making any certain choice because my opinion wouldn't really be taken for anything because I can't vote. But I'm watching this unfold and I'm listening to both of their speeches and all and their, their, all the things that they promised to do with America. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, wow, one of these candidates really wants, he wants an America that's, built around him and people who are like him that that one percent and you I, I don't feel like you could really be a president if you don't think about other people because running a country 
you have to put others before yourself. You have, you have so, millions of people who are looking up to you, who are abiding by your rules, and if you exclude them from some of the things, A, that's not right, and B, that's dangerous. Lana, in, in, in your category, in, in your age group, I know you're not uh, old enough to vote yet, but do you find that there's any kind of sentiment in reference to what is going on, on a, from a social level, from a religious level, among the people that you meet every day? I mean, is oh, there God, any, yes. any recognition? I see so many sentiment, not even just Islamic. I've... I see so much sentiment towards me <laughs> going to school from my peers because I was blessed with a brain and I've put my brain to use. So I'm in a lot of extracurricular activities that are academic based. So I've been called things like, um, oh no, I've been told things like, uh, I don't want to be black because uh, all I do is hang around white kids and uh, I'm so white and things like that. But the last time I checked, I don't look that so, so you think that uh, in, in a real sense that there's quite a bit of uh, really racism in a real sense it's among yeah. uh, people of your age and uh, what are you doing to try to uh, change that uh, in order to make the world that we live in a better world what, what are you doing and what do you find that some of your peers can do you know first of all what I personally do is I don't feed into it I'm not going to fight some ignorant child who comes up to me spurring and spitting out a bunch of racial slurs towards me because that's not going to do anything but end in a fight and that's just not what I'm about to do. First of all, I'll commonly ask them, why do you feel the way that you feel about that? And if they have sense enough to give me an answer, I'm not going to bash them for that answer because they probably, because see, racism you're not born racist. You're taught racism. If they're saying that to me, they probably grew up or in a household or a neighborhood where things like that were just common core. And so I just, well, I asked them, say, let's take, let's make a mock conversation. You're so white. All you do is hang around like it's, well, why do you think that I'm so white? Because uh, all you do is hang around like it's, well, it's not necessarily my fault. Say if I'm in a homeroom that's, Basically, in, in a lot of schools, they choose your classes by test scores. And so there will be, say, six teachers that have two advanced, two proficient, um, two basic, and the, or no, or a basic and a below basic. And so it is not my fault that in, say, a certain school, there are a lot of advanced students who just so happen not to be African-American. That's not my doing. And I didn't ask for that to happen. And if I hang around all white kids, I'm truly, I just hang around my homeroom because those are the people that I know. And if they all, or if the majority of them happen to be white or German or Irish or just non-African-American, then... That explains why I have so many friends who are not African American because that's not who I'm in class with. I have plenty of African American friends. I'm in plenty things where I'm with plenty of African American people. Like for instance, when I went to the Junior National Young Leaders Conference, it was a melting pot full of people. Like there were uh, there were so many different races. We even had a girl from Germany come. Like it was just an awesome thing, and I got to learn about so many different cultures, and it was just. So eye opening. And, and, and so, Alana, today what you're saying here is that while there might be anti sentiment, whether or not it only gets Islamic and et cetera and et cetera, that you believe that everybody ought to try to practice uh, not only love, but recognize that each person has the 13th, 14th, and the 15th Amendment rights and that ought, they ought to be free and everybody ought to be equal. Is that what we're trying to do? Speaking what you're trying? of those, the 13th Amendment banned slavery, the 14th gave us citizenship, and the 15th Amendment people need to go out and vote. <laughs> that is, it's voting season right now. That is the biggest thing I want to emphasize. If you are strong-willed and you want America to see the light of day, go out and vote. Because, please, I hate when people say, I'm not going to vote, but it'll be the main one sitting around mad when the candidate they didn't want to win ends up winning. You could have prevented that just by voting. So I encourage everybody to go out and vote. I would if I could. And so I'm just really trying to get my peers to go out and vote because I have a lot of friends who can vote and things like that. So I'm encouraging everybody to get okay. out there. And, and so, Lana, let me uh, thank you during the last uh, half minute that we have here. 
uh, dealing with uh, this very, very uh, important subject. Uh, I think that uh, from what we've talked about, our audience has a pretty good idea in terms of how many people see some of the problems and some of the issues that we raise. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune, again, tune in again next week for another informative edition of comments. Thank, Thank you, you and, and good, good morning. morning.